In this lesson, we are going to understand the key areas that organizations must plan for to either move their Microsoft 365 services completely to the cloud or to have a hybrid environment. We will discuss about email, file storage and migration and Microsoft Teams environment and Active Directory integration. The first step is to plan your email strategy to determine the best migration or coexistence option for your company. The first step in email migration planning is determining the service you are migrating from. Determining the service can be accomplished by asking some of these questions. Is it a third party resource such as Google, Apple or GoDaddy? Or does your company own its own exchange server? And what version of exchange is it if you are using an exchange server? And after asking these questions, when an organization decides which migration or coexisting option is best fit to meet its business needs, they should keep in mind some of these considerations. The first one is to understand what is their current email system. If an organization already has Exchange Server on-prem and depending on the version of Exchange, it can consider the full range of migration options. If an organization currently runs a third-party mail system, it can only use IMAP or third-party tools as migration options. The second consideration is Exchange Server versions. If an organization run Exchange Server on-premises, the version of Exchange provides the guidance on migration options available. If it runs Exchange 2000 or earlier, then IMAP, PST or third-party tools are valid options. If it runs Exchange 2003 or later, there are options for a cutover or staged migration. A hybrid configuration is also an option but only if the organization has at least Exchange 2010. Other consideration is long-term existence with Exchange. If an organization wants to keep its on-prem Exchange server, the recommended way is to consider a hybrid configuration. This approach also works with Exchange Server 2007, SP3 or later. The fourth consideration is number of users. If the organization has exchange but it doesn't want long-term coexistence, the final deciding factor is the number of users. If there are fewer than 2000 users, the recommendation is an exchange cutover migration. If there are 2000 or more mailboxes to migrate, then the version of exchange server being used determines the solution. If it is exchange 2007, then staged migration is the answer. If the exchange is 2010 or later, the organization can implement a full or minimal hybrid configuration to migrate its mailboxes. The fifth consideration is IMAP connections. If IMAP can be made available as a protocol to connect to their existing email system, an IMAP migration is possible. However, if IMAP isn't available on non-exchange server systems, migration must be PST based or use a third party tool. And finally, POP connections. If the third party email system only provides POP3 protocol over with users connect to their mailboxes, the only migration options are to use a third party migration tool. The next step is to determining your organization's collaboration requirement for file storage. Collaboration and file storage is made easier with Microsoft 365 by using two key services, OneDrive for Business and SharePoint Online. Using these services in collaboration can provide your company great opportunities to create a resilient and reliable file storage strategy. Microsoft 365 include a basic team site for you to get started and you can immediately start storing files in OneDrive for Business and collaborating on files in your team site. You can manage your OneDrive for Business to see how much space you are using and free up space if you are getting close to your storage limit. While you can upload almost any file format, some files may not be allowed for two reasons. 
security and invalid characters in the file names. OneDrive for Business security policies block certain file types and a small set of characters. So please go and read those documentation to find out before your deployment. It's important to understand that accessing file server from a company notebook isn't that different from accessing SharePoint and OneDrive resources with an Azure AD user. These legacy file servers and home drives can also be migrated to SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business. After planning your file and folder migration to Microsoft 365 services, the next step is to prepare your organization's network for Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams provide the backbone for enterprise voice and video in Microsoft 365. You can use Teams for chat, hub for teamwork which include Productivity tools like Exchange Online, Word, PowerPoint, OneNote, SharePoint, Power BI, etc. These are all built into Teams itself. To achieve the best experience using Microsoft Teams, an organization should deploy Exchange Online and SharePoint Online. And it should ensure that its current environment is ready for Teams. When planning the implementation of Microsoft Teams within its network, an organization should ensure that it has the required bandwidth and that it has access to all required IP addresses, the correct ports are open and the performance requirements are met for real-time media. If the organization doesn't meet these criteria, its end users won't get an optimal experience for Teams because of bad quality during calls and meetings. And for some reason, if your organization cannot meet this criteria, you should consider pausing the project until it completes any necessary corrective actions to meet, meet the necessary criteria before continuing. The next stage is to integrate your on-premises directories by using Azure AD Connect. You might ask, why should you use Azure AD Connect? Integrating your on-premises directory with Azure AD provides a common identity for accessing both cloud and on-premises resources. And how Azure AD Connect work? Azure AD consists of two primary components, Synchronization Services and Azure AD Connect Health. So what is Synchronization Services? This component is responsible for synchronizing users, groups, and other objects and it is also responsible for making sure identity information for your on-prem users and groups is matched with the cloud. The next component is Azure AD Connect Health. Azure AD Connect Health provides robust health monitoring and central location in the Azure portal to view this activity. That concludes this lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to look into how to plan your hybrid requirements for your Microsoft 365 deployment. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.